Hello QST readers and ARRL members worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I write the Ask Dave column for QST. This is a video which accompanies that column for the June 2025 issue. This is a draft look at that column for June, and you'll see that it talks about uh, quiet bands. We've got a question here from Ben Roberts, K1ALR, says, why is there hardly anyone on HF? Well, sometimes it seems that way. There are many ways to see whether or not there is activity on HF and where it might be. I'm going to show you one that's fairly easy to use with all of today's radios that have not only spectrum scopes, but also waterfalls. The radio that I'm going to use for the demonstration today is an ICOM 7300, and let's just talk about that quickly. Using your spectrum scope or the waterfall or both, uh, most have both, you can find band activity very quickly. Set your scope to cover the entire band. All of the examples that I'm using cover the entire band. The only band that doesn't cover that here is the 10 meter band where I cover from 28 to 29 megahertz. Now I have two antennas that I'm using for this. The 80 meter, 40 meter, 30 meter antenna is an ARRL 40 through 10 NFED half wave extended to operate on 80 meters as well. And it is horizontal at 35 feet high in my backyard. The 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters, I used my MFJ hex beam, which I recently refurbished after the UV and the winds finally destroyed it to the point that it really needed to be taken down and fixed. And it's now pointed north-northeast from southwestern Colorado, so that'll cover uh, much of the east coast of the U.S. and on into Europe. Now, the sample scans are taken about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So we'll find 80 meters pretty much closed up, and the mid bands, like 20, will have the most activity. So if we go to 80 meters, uh, or 3.5 to 4 megahertz, you look here and you see essentially nothing. And that is because this band is pretty much closed down during the day. If you were to take this scan in uh, the evening or in the middle of the night, you'd see lots more activity. Here's 40 meters. Now, 40 meters doesn't show a lot of activity, but I tuned this right over here. It happens to be that by putting it at this and covering the lower sideband, I'm picking up some digital signals down in this area, and you can just see them right there. What you're looking for are vertical lines on the waterfall. They may be too faint to hear. They may be uh, easy to hear. Uh, in this case, this is a digital signal that would be at about 7070 uh, megahertz and would probably be a PSK31 signal. So let's look on 30 meters. 30 meters hasn't got much on it. I don't see much except a little activity over here. And right in here, this might be some FT8 activity. You could take a look and see if there's anything that you could catch. On 20 meters, we hit pay dirt, okay? Now, I've got my uh, cursor up here. This is a single sideband signal. So is this, so is this, so is this, and this. And you get to recognize them fairly quickly. Down here, these are CW signals up to in here. Now, here's your FT8. This might be JS8 call or an, a RIDI station. Here is uh, some more probably RIDI maybe a little bit of Morse code in there. I su suspect there's a contest uh, going on. Now this area here from 14.10 up to 14.15, there's really very little US activity in that area, uh, but you will see plenty of other activity up here. And it's real easy to listen to them since we're using upper sideband here. We're looking at things that are above our reference point. So we'd put it there. If we were looking for lower sideband activity, we would put the cursor above the signal and hear it, okay? Now, in this case, you can actually see some indication on the audio right here. Now, and of course, lots of CW. Now, let's take a look at 17 meters. There are things going on. There's a real strong single sideband signal right here. Here is your FT8 and stuff like that. Um, 
I was looking at this just yesterday and I found a signal up in this area right here. As it turns out, it was a DX station. It was about the only signal on the band. And I found it and I tried and tried and tried and tried to work it. Finally got my hex beam pointed in the right direction, turned on the amplifier here. It's uh, Ravi in the Seychelles, which is off the east coast of Africa. It's called signed S79VU. Okay, so it is definitely possible to find some isolated signals when everybody else thinks the band is closed. So that happened up in this area right here. Let's see, 18.145 uh, would have been right about here, okay? I just saw a faint little streak there, put the thing on it. Sure enough, it was a DX station and I was able to work it. Let's go on to 15 meters. Not a lot going on on 15 meters. Uh, there's a CW signal here. Here's your FT8, lots of it, okay? Now, these other things, when you see things that are periodic like this, okay, these are spurs that are generated as part of the receiving process uh, that the radio goes through. Now, note, there's no signal, not even an S1 signal where I'm tuned. And so they'll show up just lightly, but notice how well these show up over here, the FT8 and the CW. Now, if we go up to 12 meters, okay, we see that there are some signals here. This is probably FT8. There's a fairly strong something right in this area. It might be digital. Uh, there's a weak single sideband signal here and an extremely weak single sideband signal here. Okay. So now let's go from 12 meters to 10 meters. Now this goes from 28 to 29. Above 29 to 29.7 is mostly FM activity. And again, what we see here are these spurs. We're getting only about an S1.5 signal here. So these kind of show up. This right here is a single sideband signal. You can tell because the spurs kind of move around a little bit where the single sideband signal will be very steady. Now in this case, I have the cursor on the FT8 frequency and look, there are signals in there. They don't show up much right here. They don't show up much right here, but boy, they're there. They are right there. You could put that thing on and probably work uh, some stations. A fairly faint line, and you can adjust the level of this uh, in the adjustments on the uh, ICOM uh, 7300 and probably on a lot of other radios as well. So there you have it, a very quick overview of how handy your uh, spectrum analyzer, which is actually looking at the levels of the spectrum, and the waterfall, which is the history of what is seen, the most recent at the top, the oldest scrolls off the bottom. You can use that very quickly to spot likely activity on any of the bands. As we saw today, without even listening to 20 meters, it's quite a hotbed of activity. But we also noticed, even on 10 meters, that we had FT8 activity. And we could tell all that without hearing a thing, just looking at the waterfall. Great way to find activity on HF. Now, today is like a couple days after a solar storm, so it doesn't seem like there's much out there. But 20 belies that. There is a lot out there. So, until we next meet, please subscribe to QST. Become a member of the ARRL. I once took a picture of a gas station pump where I'd filled my Jeep. Just once. And it cost more than a year of the ARRL. So, I think the ARRL membership is worth a lot more than one fill-up of a Jeep. So go ahead and join that. If you want, you can get all your magazines online. You get all four of them. You can pay for printed subscriptions, which I do, but I think I'm about to stop doing because I end up reading it online before it comes out in print because it takes about two weeks to get here in print. I'm already done reading it. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.